The Shuffle Model of Differential Privacy, DP, is a sophisticated privacy protection protocol for distributed data analysis. It introduces an intermediate trusted server shuffler between local randomizers and a central analyzer, amplifying the central privacy guarantee through the introduction of extra randomness. However, deriving a tight privacy bound for this model is challenging due to its complex randomization protocol. Most existing studies focus on unified local privacy settings, assuming all users have the same privacy level. This work, however, focuses on a more practical setting with personalized local privacy, where each user requires a different privacy level. To bound the privacy after shuffling, it is crucial to capture the probability of each user generating clones of neighboring data points and quantify the indistinguishability between two distributions of the number of clones on neighboring datasets. Existing works either inaccurately capture the probability or underestimate the indistinguishability between neighboring datasets. This study develops a more precise analysis, yielding a general and tighter bound for arbitrary DP mechanisms. Firstly, the clone generating probability is derived using hypothesis testing, leading to a more accurate characterization of the probability. Secondly, the indistinguishability is analyzed in the context of FDP where the convexity of the distributions is leveraged to achieve a tighter privacy bound. This refined analysis provides a clearer understanding of the shuffle model's privacy guarantee, making it more practical for real-world applications with varying user privacy requirements. This paper introduces a novel approach to analyze the privacy amplification effect on shuffle models in the context of personalized local differential privacy PLDP. PLDP is a technique where user data is first randomized locally and then aggregated for statistical analysis or model training. However, accurately quantifying the privacy amplification effect has been challenging due to factors such as the varying probabilities of each user's data being wrongly recognized and the complexity of overall distributions of clone numbers. The authors propose a more precise analysis by conducting hypothesis testing on the distribution of current noisy data points and their neighboring data points. This method allows for the computation of the probability of any data point being wrongly recognized as a specific data point, which is crucial for understanding the privacy amplification effect. This approach can be applied to both pure and approximate PLDP settings, with arbitrary differential privacy local randomizers. Moreover, the paper analyzes the indistinguishability between two overall distributions of clone numbers in the context of differential privacy. These distributions are depicted as multi-Bernoulli and binomial distributions, and the convexity of these distributions is exploited to closely characterize their properties. This leads to a tighter upper bound on the privacy after shuffling. The main contributions of this work include providing a precise analysis for privacy amplification effects on shuffle models for personalized privacy, offering a general method to quantify the confounding effect of PLDP with hypothesis testing, and verifying the proposed analysis with numerical results that demonstrate a significant improvement in privacy bounds compared to state-of-the-art methods on both pure and approximate PLDP. In the context of differential privacy, Shuffle-based privacy models aim to enhance central privacy while preserving local user privacy. Differential privacy is defined as a privacy notion that ensures an individual's data has a bounded impact on the output, quantified by the privacy level E and failure probability delta. Local differential privacy, a relaxation of differential privacy, allows for more flexible privacy guarantees. To strengthen central privacy, the shuffle model introduces a trusted third-party shuffler that permutes data points before sending them to an untrusted analyzer. This setup enables the analysis of the confounding effect, which represents the randomness introduced by the shuffler and serves as the foundation for amplification effect analysis. The confounding effect is quantified using hypothesis testing on distributions R, X, and R, XB1. The type 1 error captures the probability of wrongly recognizing the output of R, X, as an output of R, X, B1, providing a precise description of P, the confounding effect of R, X, on X, B1. The quantification of P is elaborated in two parts, hypothesis testing on neighboring data point X, B1 and the rest data point X. For the neighboring data point X, B1, the confounding effect depends on the privacy budget, E1, delta 1. 
A hypothesis testing approach is used to derive P, where the null hypothesis is Z is generated by R, X B1, and the alternative hypothesis is Z is generated by R, she. By applying the Neyman Pearson lemma, a precise expression for P is derived, essential for privacy amplification effect analysis. This work contributes to the field by providing a novel approach to quantify the confounding effect in shuffle based privacy models leading to a stronger amplification effect and improved data utility. The analysis is conducted under both pure and approximate local differential privacy settings, offering insights into how different privacy mechanisms impact the overall privacy guarantee. In the context of approximate differential privacy, researchers have developed a method for hypothesis testing to distinguish between two distributions. The goal is to determine whether a given output Z originated from X0 or X1 represented by hypotheses H0 and H1, respectively. To achieve this, the likelihood ratio test is employed, which is the most powerful way to distinguish between two distributions according to the Neyman-Pearson lemma. The rejection region S is defined as the set of Z values for which the probability of R, X0, equals Z is less than the probability of R, X1, equals Z. The authors also consider the failure set T delta where privacy protection fails, and remove it to achieve a lower bound on P. Extending this method, the authors test data points Xi for I element of 2, N, considering heterogeneous privacy parameters, EI, delta I, and E1, delta 1. The hypothesis testing is set up with H0. Z came from Xi and H1. Z came from XB. The rejection region U is defined as the set of Z values for which the probability of R, she, equals Z is less than the maximum of the probabilities of R, X0, and R, X1, equals Z. U is further partitioned into two subsets U0 and U1, representing the cases where R, she, is wrongly recognized as R, X0, or R, X1, respectively. The failure set due to delta I is removed from U and the probabilities of type 1 error on X0 and X1 are defined as P0i and P1i, respectively. The authors observe that P0i and P1i change as she changes and adopt the minimal P to describe the confounding effect of R, she. This leads to a rewritten equation, 4, that describes the relationship between R, she, and R, X0, and R, X1. Figures 2 and 3, a illustrate the rejection regions U0 and U1, and how P0i and P1i change as she changes, respectively. The authors delve into the confounding effect of personalized privacy on the shuffle model, illustrating how different confounding patterns emerge under varying privacy budgets. Figure 3 exemplifies this concept, demonstrating the fluctuation of the orange line, which suggests distinct confounding patterns under personalized privacy. In their exploration of privacy amplification with F-differential privacy, FDP, the authors aim to achieve a tighter privacy bound for the shuffle model under EI, delta I, PLDP with FDP. They initiate this process by deriving the probability distribution P and generating clones of R, XB, through shuffling. The overall distributions of the number of clones on D0 and D1 are denoted as P and Q, respectively. The authors employ the idea from 25 that mixed distributions are more indistinguishable when indices are unknown and arrive the lower bound of the trade-off function of the overall distribution. Specifically, they establish trade-off functions on subdistributions for each possible situation with certain weights. This leads to theorem 1, which defines the trade-off function fs, alpha, t of the shuffling process. The authors then convert the trade-off function to differential privacy, DP, based on the primal doe perspective, 6. This results in theorem 2, which provides an enhanced privacy bound for the shuffling process, with randomizer, shuffler, and analyzer, R hollow bullet S hollow bullet A. The bound is expressed in terms of E and delta S, E, where delta S, E, is a function of E, W, delta 1, and other parameters. The analysis focuses on the worst case scenario, where user 1 with XB adopts the weakest privacy budget, E1 equals max, EI. The authors acknowledge that delta I is typically negligible in practice, 
and thus delta 1 is the corresponding parameter. Evaluating personalized local differential privacy parameters for optimal privacy amplification. This study assesses the impact of various personalized local differential privacy, PLDP, parameter settings on privacy amplification effects, comparing pure and approximate PLDP. The proposed bound is shown to achieve the strongest privacy amplification effect when combined with both Laplace and Gaussian mechanisms. These results are derived from precise hypothesis testing on concrete mechanisms and sharp bounds with F-differential privacy, FDP. The experiment setting involves multiple PLDP parameter settings, as outlined in Table 1, which lists privacy parameters for various mechanisms, including BBGN, FV, CCC, and LZX. Notably, BBGN and FV lack analysis on personalized privacy and rely on approximate bounds using MAX, EI, for all data points. Numerical evaluations in Figure 4 demonstrate the privacy amplification effects of different PLDP settings and the number of users. The proposed bound outperforms other baseline methods, attributed to two factors, the noisier nature of the Gaussian mechanism compared to the Laplace mechanism under the same epsilon, resulting in a larger confounding effect on approximate PLDP, and the precise characterization of the Gaussian distribution by FDP leading to a tighter bound on approximate PLDP. This research contributes to the understanding of privacy amplification in PLDP, providing insights into the performance of different mechanisms and their implications for privacy-preserving data analysis. This work refines the privacy bound on the shuffle model for both pure and approximate private local differential privacy, PLDP, achieving up to five times smaller epsilon bounds compared to state-of-the-art methods. By comprehensively analyzing the confounding effect of perturbed individual data and overall distributions, the authors derive a tighter bound on delta. As demonstrated in Table 2, the proposed method outperforms baselines under the same epsilon, yielding significantly smaller delta values. Specifically, the delta values obtained using the proposed method are substantially smaller than those obtained using existing methods when shuffling with different fixed epsilon values. The refined privacy bound has significant implications for privacy amplification in various applications. This achievement is crucial, as it enables more effective protection of sensitive information in scenarios where data is shuffled to ensure privacy. Notably, this research was supported by funding from the National Key Research and Develop Plan, National Natural Science Foundation of China, National Science Foundation, and National Institute of Health. Please provide the content to refine, and I'll transform it into a direct, concise, and technically accurate summary suitable for voiceover narration. I'll maintain the depth and accuracy of the original content while ensuring a professional tone and precise language.